But first, let's get into it. What a week. <laughs> what a week. <laughs> On Wednesday, President Biden addressed the nation from the Oval Office. I revere this office, but I love my country more. It's been the honor of my life to serve as your president. But in the defense of democracy, which is at stake, I think it's more important than any title. Don't feel bad for him, though. Uh, becoming a national martyr is every young Catholic boy's ultimate dream. <laughs> After that recurring one where God sends a letter to his mother detailing every time he's jerked it on a Sunday. <laughs> the president continued. I draw strength and I find joy in working for the American people. But this sacred task of perfecting our union it's not about me. It's about you, your families, your futures. It's about we, the people. We can never forget that. And I never have. Why did we decide we didn't want this guy? It's so weird to me. <laughs> people are so weird. Hmm. I don't get it. Said Biden. I believe my record as president, my leadership in the world, my vision for America's future, all merited a second term, but nothing, nothing can come in the way of saving our democracy. That includes personal ambition. Biden then ended the telecast, and instead of following Miranda Priestly into the Paris fashion show, threw his flip phone into the Fontaine de Fleur, Fontaine de Fleur, Fontaine de Fleur, <laughs> and walked away from it all. Font Fontaine de Fleur. On Tuesday, Kamala Harris hit the ground running at a campaign event in Milwaukee. As Attorney General of California, I took on one of our country's largest for-profit colleges that was scamming students. Donald Trump ran a for-profit college that scammed students. As a prosecutor, I specialized in cases involving sexual abuse. Well... Trump was found liable for committing sexual abuse. Hook it into my veins. <laughs> Just <laughs> Do you know how much of a world-class asshole you have to be that we forget you started a fake college to scam students? <laughs> students who wanted nothing more than to learn how to start businesses from the world's worst person. Here's, here's Vice President Harris on Project 2025. Donald Trump wants to take our country backward. He and his extreme Project 2025 agenda will weaken the middle class. Like, we know we got to take this serious thing. Can you believe they put that thing in writing? It is crazy that they put that thing in writing. Project 2025 should have been an oral tradition performed by throat singers at Heritage Foundation male-only retreats. <laughs> and from the sounds of it, from the feel of it, from the vibe shift, it feels like America is on board Kamala 2024 Express. We believe in a future where every person has the opportunity not just to get by, but to get ahead. <laughs> future where no child has to grow up in poverty, where every worker has the freedom to join a union, where every person has affordable health care, affordable child care, and paid family leave. And fuck it, I'll say it, Diet Mountain Dew is racist. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, on Wednesday, Vote.org reported that over 38,500 people registered to vote since Biden dropped out on Sunday, a 700% spike in registrations this election cycle. Also on Wednesday, the Crooked Store dropped a new shirt that says, vote in the Brat font. Coincidence? <laughs> it is a coincidence. It is a coincidence. Celebrities followed in Charlie XCX's footsteps and endorsed Kamala with Cardi B tweeting, let's go. I told y'all Kamala was supposed to be the 2024 candidate. In 2024, let's elect a WAP, a woman-ass president. <laughs> <laughs> 
Hillary Clinton on Wednesday published a New York Times op-ed titled How Kamala Harris Can Win and Make History. Clinton wrote of Biden giving up the nomination as one who shared that dream and has had to make peace with letting it go. I know this wasn't easy, but it was the right thing to do. Letting go of dreams is tough. I imagine. Never done it personally. I still think this will be a TV show one day. <laughs> nah, I'm kidding. I, don't, I'm not, I know it can't be. I, I didn't get TV thin until I was radio old. Then on Thursday, Kamala's campaign released their first ad with Beyonce's Freedom as her campaign song. There are some people who think we should be a country of chaos, of fear, of hate. But us, we choose something different. We choose freedom. What? I take that chaos part personally, grumbled Rudy Giuliani as he was being chased by like six geese. <laughs> Let's enjoy more ad. The freedom not just to get by, but get ahead. The freedom to be safe from gun violence. The freedom to make decisions about your own body. We choose a future where no child lives in poverty, where we can all afford health care, where no one is above the law. <laughs> Into the veins. <laughs> Trump responded, you had me at safe from gun violence. <laughs> but then you lost me at the part about my crimes. <laughs> also on Thursday, Trump dropped his first attack ad, and this is how it starts. I am Kamala Harris. My pronouns are she and her. This is how Trump explains... <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> this is how Trump explains the reasoning behind this ad. Quote, I hate pronouns. Uh, I mean, Trump hate pronouns. <laughs> Trump fear mongers around all the topics you'd expect, the border, defund the police, Bernie Sanders, and worst of all. Do you ban plastic straws? I think we should. Okay. Just inside of our circle here, we can admit that that's a miss. Paper straws are bad is easily the Republican Party's strongest issue. <laughs> but we can't let the fear of limp paper straws losing all structural integrity after three minutes in an iced out latte to control our futures. There has to be a better way. We can get Biden's cancer moonshot people on it. We could solve this problem. And until then, we're just going to use the plastic straws. <laughs> Meanwhile, Kamala's campaign team has been responding to Trump. They sent an email entitled, Statement on a 78-Year-Old Criminal's Fox News Appearance, with a bulleted list of issues, including, Trump is clearly worried he made the wrong pick in J.D. Vance. Trump is old and quite weird, question mark. This guy should never be president again. <laughs> First of all, it, 10 out of 10, no notes. It is awesome. <laughs> It is awesome seeing this campaign of talented people unleashed in this way. It's like Kamala walked around and breathed on the statues like Aslan. <laughs> then the campaign's secret weapon is fucking Doug. <laughs> Doug, 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 Doug. I've seen this proposed on social media, which is that he, we should not obey the previous conventions in any forum, that it should be ladies and gentlemen, Madam President and Doug. <laughs> His official title should be Doug. <laughs> Speaking to Jewish Democrats this week, Doug said this. I'm just going to keep living um, like openly like a Jew, and maybe there'll be a mezuzah on the White House. Let's, let's just think of some of the downsides. Chuck Schumer sees the mezuzah on the White House, instantly climaxes. <laughs> We toned it down from cums. <laughs> it's a nice idea. <laughs> but, but the White House won't be fully Jewified until there's a six-month-old box of Streitz's matzah in the kitchen and a loose lactate rolling around the drawers of the Resolute desk. You got to be able to walk into that White House and say, I can get a lactate if I need a lactate. That's how you know that this place is the home of a Jewish man. Doug hides the Afi Komen in the Situation Room. High jinks and an unfortunate military confrontation with China ensues. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> Meanwhile, Trump's team is reportedly panicked at new polling, showing Harris in the lead just ahead of the former president. Imagine panicking about polls. Couldn't be us. <laughs> not now, not ever. <laughs> Fucking even. According to Reuters, Harris is currently polling at 44%, with Trump bringing up the rear at 42%. Back in the margin of error, baby, living life in that sweet, sweet M of E. Yum, yum, yum. <laughs> but if it helps, Donald, 
you're in the lead age-wise, you're at 78. Donald Trump is 78, and I think that's pretty old. <laughs> pretty old to nominate a person who's 78. Don't even know what these Republicans are thinking. Strange decision they've made. It's we He's a weird guy and old. Just an old, weird guy complaining all the time. Weird dude, weird dude, very old. A Trump's chief pollster, who is not Tampa's gayest hairstylist, Tony Fabrizio, <laughs> rushed. <laughs> oh, who did my ombre? It was Tony Fabrizio. My highlights? Just Tony Fabrizio. Fabrizio rushed to assure the MAGA fans that yes, okay, the polls might look bad, but before long, Harris's honeymoon will end and voters will refocus on her role as Biden's partner and co-pilot. She may have been Biden's co-pilot, but look at me. Look at me. She's the captain now. <laughs> Trump's buddies on Fox did their best to tamp down the nation's newfound optimism. You need to understand what's happening here. This is Kamala's honeymoon period. She is experiencing a sugar high, a, you know, a feeling of relief and enthusiasm that the guy that can't walk and talk, that's dazed and confused, the guy that mumbles and bumbles and stumbles, oh, thank God it's not him. It's, it's a honeymoon. It's a sugar high. But mark my words, it will be short-lived. So first of all, I love that clip. I love... I love that Sean Hannity is basically like a thunder blanket for, <laughs> for, for, for a like angry, confused old white Republicans watching this, being like, "What's happening? This can't. There's there. I don't understand." She seems they seem to like her, but she's dancing, and he's like, "It's okay. The polls are gonna be bad, but you're gonna be okay. We'll just, we'll just you know, just just you get under the desk and you get into a small space, a sugar high." It's just a sugar high, says Sean Hannity. Voters will come to their senses and realize they need us for a hearty, filling serving of dog shit. <laughs> and I will say this. Sean does have a point. Kamala is our rebound. And it did happen pretty fast after the breakup. <laughs> but you know what? When it feels right, you know it. And before you say it, mom, no, this is not another Andrew Cuomo situation. <laughs> what we have with Kamala is real. Republicans also continued to call Harris a DEI hire, their latest euphemism uh, for being black if it's a woman speaking, or a woman if it's a man speaking, like Republican Representative Harriet Hageman. I think it's just a failure from top to bottom. Uh, I think she was a DEI hire, and I think that that's what we're seeing, and I just don't think that they have anybody else. I just think that they're in real disarray. There are people online comparing her to George Santos and saying George Santos <laughs> has snuck back into Congress. and. <laughs> That's not right. That's not right. Stop it. That's not who we are. And sure, that makes sense. Kamala got to where she is because she's the black daughter of an immigrant. This is in contrast to Donald Trump, who worked his way up to real estate tycoon from his humble beginnings as son of real estate tycoon. Not to be outdone, Congressman Andy Ogles filed articles of impeachment against Harris, accusing her of a public breach of trust for allegedly covering up the president's well-being or lack thereof. Wrote Ogles, Kamala Devi Harris has knowingly misled the people of the United States to obfuscate the physical and cognitive well-being of the president of the United States, Joe Biden. They only got to Tuesday before busting out her middle name. I thought for sure we'd close out the week, but that's just on me. Jonathan Hussein Lovett. <laughs> At a rally in Charlotte on Wednesday, Donald Trump bought his post-assassination attempt spiritual awakening to a close. You know, I was supposed to be nice. They say something happened to me when I got shot. I became nice. And when you're dealing with these people, they're very dangerous people. When you're dealing with them, you can't be too nice. You really can't be. So if you don't mind, I'm not going to be nice. Is that OK? They say something happened to me, the asshole area of my brain. They call it the asshole area. It got knocked offline, okay, but it's back now. The doctors save it, and they're saying it's stronger than it's ever been. That even he can make fun of the stupid fucking story that claimed he had been changed by what happened. He knows it's a joke. That was funny, though. We've got to give it to him. That was a good one. Trump kindly repeated Harris's central campaign message. They get me to that position, and then their campaign says, I'm the prosecutor. And he is the convicted felon. That's their campaign. 
I don't think people are going to buy it. I don't think people are going to buy this true sentence that is so memorable. As a contrast, I, her opponent, am repeating it at my own rally, reminding everyone here and every reporter covering this event about how interesting that contrast message is. It's like Pepsi saying they think people like Santa and polar bears and are going to associate ice cold Arctic snow and the joy of Christmas with their delicious, refreshing soda. Give me a break. <laughs> Stupid thing for Pepsi to say. <laughs> Got to drive your own message. In all seriousness, if you really want to see where the Trump campaign is at right now, just check out Donald Jr. over on Rumble. Like, there's some of them are like, we don't even want white women. Like, it doesn't, like, we need to check, like, three or four boxes so you can end up in, like, if you're, like, you know, a trans communist this, that, and the other, like, you too can be the CEO of a Fortune 500 company with no experience whatsoever. <laughs> First of all, I just want you to, do you remember that commercial when I, do you remember that commercial when I was a kid <laughs> where they said, this has not been sped up? This footage has not been sped up. <laughs> That is the speed at which Don Jr. is speaking to a silent and deeply confused J.D. Vance. <laughs> Meanwhile, social media was aflame this week with an incredible claim about Republican vice presidential candidate J.D. Vance. Vance, I never know. Uh, <laughs> the claim is that J.D. Vance once had sex with a couch. How many of you are so terminally online that you're aware of this? How many of you are not aware of this? Proud of you. I'm proud of you. <laughs> Sex with a couch, responded Vance. OK, I'll bite. Why do you think they call it a love seat? <laughs> the craziest part is Vance let the couch get on top because JD Vance is a lazy boy. <laughs> I haven't seen people have this much fun on the internet since everybody found out that the JD in JD Vance stands for Jadoff Dittler. <laughs> Alas, we are nothing if not journalists here. As it turns out, no such passage exists in Vance's New York Times bestseller, and so we have to say there remains no concrete evidence that JD Vance has publicly admitted to having sex with a couch. We cannot say more than that but that is what we can say. It did lead to this incredible fact check by the AP. The headline is, no, J.D. Vance did not have sex with a couch. But much in the same way that the AP might have debunked one aspect of the story, that is a claim the AP cannot make. The only claim the AP could make is that the claim that J.D. Vance documented sex with a couch in Hillbilly Elegy, that is false. But this is a sweeping, sweeping claim of the negative. And anyway, a headline like that tells you your candidacy is off to a roaring start. <laughs> in other J.D. Vance not so recent news, a 2021 clip resurfaced in which the Republican vice presidential candidate accuses Kamala Harris, who is a step parent, of being miserable because she's childless. A very good point, because think of all of your friends who don't have children and how miserable they are. <laughs> and how they're always going, oh, you know what would have made this weekend getaway more fun? A toddler. <laughs> here's, here's what Vance said. We're effectively run in this country via the Democrats, via, via our corporate oligarchs, by a bunch of childless cat ladies who are miserable at their own lives and the choices that they've made, and so they want to make the rest of the country miserable, too. This naturally enraged the nation's childless cat ladies, including Jennifer Aniston. Aniston, who had spoken publicly about her fertility issues and unsuccessful attempt to conceive using IVF, wrote on Instagram, I truly cannot believe this is coming from a potential VP. All I can say is, Mr. Vance, I pray that your daughter is fortunate enough to bear children of her own one day. As Minnesota Governor Tim Waltz put it, I'll tell you what, go ahead and continue to denigrate people. Go ahead. My God, they went after cat people. Good luck with that. Turn on the Internet and see what cat people do when you go after them. Seems like they mostly just post pictures of their cats, but I take his point. The ex-wife of second gentleman Doug Emhoff leapt into the fray to defend Harris against J.D. Vance's sexism and criticism. My God, Trump can't even get his current wife to defend him. Said Kirsten Emhoff, these are baseless attacks for over 10 years since Cole and Ella were teenagers. Kamala has been a co-parent with Doug and I. She is a loving, nurturing, fiercely protective, and always present. I love our blended family and am grateful to have her in it. I thought it was mature and involved for me to reply, ha, 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 when my ex texts me a meme. This is incredible. <laughs> Harris isn't childless, and it's nice of Kirsten with an E 
to point that out. But also, childless women are not unfit to hold public office. Giving birth is not a prerequisite to governing. What kind of twisted little sicko freak looks at a woman running for office and goes, ah, but has she breastfed? Also, being endorsed as a stepmom by the ex-wife of your husband is Jedi-level relationship skills. Her husband's ex-wife is on her side. Get this woman in a room with Putin. <laughs> Meanwhile... Fucking weirdos. I, I, the, the weirdo argument is a... These people are fucking freaks who have talked to each other in rooms alone for so long that they come out and the shit they said is weird. Remember when the Chicago Tribune wanted to call themselves Tronk? <laughs> this storied brand got into a room, a bunch of people spent too much time, had too much coffee, didn't talk to anybody outside of the room, and they came out and said, we've done it. We've figured out a new brand for this thing. We're calling it Tronk. And everybody's like, stupid, bad, go away. This is... The Republicans have gone full trunk. <laughs> Meanwhile, the government's whitest men rushed to throw their hats in the ring for Kamala's vice presidency this week. I got to tell you, I'm loving the show. Minnesota Governor Tim Walz came out swinging against Trump and J.D. Vance. Their <laughs> policies are what destroyed rural America. They've divided us. They're in our exam rooms. They're telling us what books to read. I think this is going back to the bread and butter, getting away from this division. We do not like what has happened where we can't even go to Thanksgiving dinner with our uncle because you end up in some weird fight that is unnecessary. <laughs> and, and I think yeah. bringing back people together, well, it's true, these guys are just it weird. Is. And, and it it's, is. you know, they're running for He-Man Women Haters Club or something. Pick him, pick him, said Joe Biden, loving the reference. It's a reference to the Little Rascals, which I presume Joe Biden would refer to as our gang. He's like, yeah, they ruined it when they let him start talking. <laughs> it was originally a silent. It was originally a silent. People don't know that. <laughs> Pete Buttigieg also clowned Vance on CNN. The choice of J.D. Vance is a regrettable choice because he's somebody who was at his most convincing and effective when he talked about how unfit for office Donald Trump is. And he has not explained any reason other than, of course, his obvious interest in power, why he would have changed his mind on that. It was awesome. Kentucky Governor Andy Bashir, Pennsylvania Governor Josh Shapiro, and Arizona Senator and former astronaut and Navy pilot Mark Kelly also came out swinging. Meanwhile, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu arrived in D.C. to speak to Congress on Wednesday. Honestly, perfect week for him to come. He's like a guy trying to get everybody's attention during a fireworks show happening directly above an active shark attack. <laughs> In the end, around half of Congress's Democrats, including former Speaker Nancy Pelosi, did not attend Netanyahu's address. Pelosi opted to meet with families of hostages instead. Said Pelosi, Benjamin Netanyahu's presentation in the House chamber today was by far the worst presentation of any foreign dignitary invited and honored with the privilege of addressing the Congress of the United States. That has to have hit Netanyahu pretty hard, given that Congress has had a lot of sick fucks address it before. For example... Meanwhile, protesters released piles of maggots and crickets at the Watergate Hotel where Netanyahu was staying. My salad, said RFK Jr. <laughs> and what's interesting about that, RFK Jr. has never said anything about eating bugs, but you thought you missed a story. <laughs> Just something I made up. Speaking of creeps, Senator Bob Menendez submitted his resignation and will leave office on August 20th following his conviction on federal corruption charges. Sounds like Kamala just found her VP. You want to defeat a criminal, you got to think like a criminal. <laughs> Just crazy enough to work. In a recent Adidas ad, Bella Hadid was featured wearing a pair of retro sneakers modeled after a design that was used in the 1972 Munich Olympics. Israel reacted furiously to the ad, saying Adidas recently launched a new campaign for their shoes to highlight the 1972 Olympics. Uh, in Munich, 11 Israelis were murdered by Palestinian terrorists during the Munich Olympics. Guess what, who the face of their campaign is? Bella Hadid, a half-Palestinian model who has a history of spreading anti-Semitism and calling for violence against Israelis and Jews. There's only one reason Adidas would hire the most beautiful woman in the world, and that's to do subtle, esoteric, shoe-based anti-Semitism. <laughs> on Monday, Adidas posted an Instagram apology, writing that its recent campaign was not meant to have any connection to the tragedy at the 1972 Olympics. I believe them. You can tell because there isn't one. It's been a while since I've seen the movie Munich, but as Spielberg tells it, the attack had very little to do with running shoes. <laughs> Unfortunately, it's not a full apology in my eyes until it includes the words, we've been very bad Adidas. 
In the wake of Elon Musk's sit-down interview with Canada's weirdest man, Jordan Peterson, in which Musk claims he was tricked into allowing his eldest child to transition, that child, Vivian, now 20, aired him out on threads. Vivian pointed to a tweet Musk wrote in the past in which he said that she was born gay and slightly autistic. And as someone who was born gay, and let's face it, with a little whiff of the spectrum on him, I take offense. <laughs> just a... Just a... Vivian says that the evidence, which is that she once described Elon's jacket as looking fabulous when she when she was four years old, didn't happen and couldn't have happened because her father, quote, simply wasn't there, end quote, while she was growing up. Claiming children are gay and autistic instead of trans has become an increasingly common right wing talking point. As for her father's claim she isn't trans, Vivian concluded, I am legally recognized as a woman in the state of California and I don't concern myself with the opinions of those who are below me. Obviously, Elon can't say the same because in a ketamine fueled haze, he's desperate for attention and validation from an army of degenerate red pilled incels and pick me's who are quick to give it to him. Go touch some fucking grass. <laughs> If you're a father and your child doesn't go public with your ketamine problem, then congratulations, you landed the plane. And if, and if your child's calling you by your first name on the internet while mocking your ketamine problem, you muffed it. <laughs> also, how fun that Elon's trans kid is 10 times the poster he could ever dream of being, and it's all happening on threats. <laughs> there was a, um, there was uh, uh, one of those TikTok kerfuffles of every, you know, everybody, everybody like draws their phones now in a public confrontation, like it's the Wild West, and it's like, do 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 do. I'll sh film you. That's how I'm the. If I'm filming you, I'm the victim. If you're filming me, you're the vic fuck. I gotta film you harder than you're filming me. But anyway, there's this place to prove that I'm the victim. Vim victim films. Perpetrator gets filmed. That's the rules of TikTok fights. <laughs> so, <laughs> but so anyway, this woman is like harassing these drag queens who are just sitting in the lobby of a hotel. And she's like, I didn't pay all this money to have my children exposed to drag queens. And it turns out this is a person that's been protesting, part, part of, I think, Moms for Liberty, or one or some organization like that, has been, a, has been like a kind of creep at school board meetings. And then you look into it, and it turns out has a, a child that came out as trans and obviously could not handle it and then can't handle that they can't handle it. And just, it is... It is often that you'll see, like some, you, you see, why is Elon Musk losing his mind? Why is he, why has he done this? There you go. Listen, there's no parade for it, but I'm, I'm dating a trans person, and uh, still no parade. But, <laughs> but uh, I was with them and a few older relatives, and one of their older relatives was misgendering them and saying she and you know. When, when she was little and when she was that. And then I realized that like no one, I was just like, they, it's they. The pronoun is they. And this older relative was like, I know, I'm sorry, but you have to understand this is hard for me. I have, I have known them since they were a baby. I have changed their diapers. I'm trying, this is hard. We've all been through hard things. My parents were in the Holocaust. <laughs> and then, they're like, what? <laughs> and then she said, well, I'm just saying we've all dealt with hard things. I was like, are you comparing using the correct pronouns to the Shoah? <laughs> and, and this older relative said, what? And then my significant other said, the Holocaust. And then the older relative said, I know what the Shoah is. <laughs> the point is this was a supportive person doing their best. And finally, Oscar Mayer Wienermobile. <laughs> and finally, the Oscar Mayer Wienermobile was involved in a rollover crash in Illinois, though luckily no injuries were reported. The Wienermobile is still rolling over at this very moment to keep it at a juicy 140 degrees. <laughs> <laughs>